Junior, there's something I'd like to leave with my grandkids, great grandkids. A story about me, their grandpa, and great grandpa. It's about my military life that I'd like to share with them so they'll know that their great grandpa served in the war. It starts off with like in the 60s. I was about 18 years old, and they began to draft people that time. I had not thought about military at all to start with, because I was, my dad taught me how to work in the fields. I was a migrant worker. My dad taught me to follow seasonal work. Right here is where that, when I was, that night that we were flying strikes, that's where the plane hit this back tail in half ways. You see those nets? Those are the nets I had to jump into to get away from the fire. I served on the USS Coral Sea, CVA-43, which was an aircraft carrier, a nuclear power ship at first, and I worked as an aircraft director. I remember being, we were docked in Japan and we were out, out on our leave and we heard a, we heard an a emergency call for all military men to get back to their stations. So we said to ourselves, I know I said to myself, I said, oh boy, what's going on now? So we all got back to the boat. We got back to the boat, the ship finally pulled out. The guys that didn't make it before the ship pulled out, later on they flew them on deck to be on their station. So we got out about 50, they say about 50 miles out at sea. The captain came over and he announced that we were going to war. They called it a police action. So sure enough, we started. We started into the Vietnam War at that time. I couldn't believe. I couldn't imagine the weapons, the bombs, the even nuclear weapons. We had. Uh, rockets and missiles and you name it. They came out of, out of nowhere. I couldn't believe it, how they were, but that's when it started. My main goal was to fulfill my duties. And then along with that, together with that, is to finally make it out and go home. That was my main goal. But during that time, I had to be very alert. I seen, I know of a guy that got chopped up in the propellers. I seen a guy get sucked up by an intake of a jet. I seen there was another guy got rolled over by a, one of the planes. So I seen various things, accidents that happened. So it was no time to be thinking what you should do. You had to be alert constantly. What planes were on, what planes were off. Where you walked, if you run, you better watch where you run, and things like that. And there was another time that a big Russian bomber flew over us. And of course, right away they sent up planes to guide him and be on his tail in case he tried anything. Those little scary moments there. 
Other than that, you had to be very alert, very concerned of what you're doing. And don't be into La La Land because that's how guys would get hurt. During the time that I was in the military, also there was another conflict that I was going through, which I was not aware of. Uh, I didn't know what a racial, what racial was about, because my dad was a migrant worker, and, I was, and he taught me how to do migrant worker, so we never had that experience before. But once I got into the military, that was another battle that I had, a struggle that I had. We started to see the racial problems that we had, and they started to disrespect us in different ways. So we, uh, I remember uh, us Mexicans had to get together with the blacks to keep some of these people off of us. Caucasians that were, I guess they were Southerners or somewhere where it's real racial and they didn't, and we always had certain fights. I remember in, uh, in Port we had a riot. There was two riots in two different ports, I can't remember. One was in Japan and another one I think. No, I can't remember what the other one was, but we had that conflict with us. So we had to, we considered ourselves had to fight two wars. One war was with the Vietnam and the other war was the racial issue that we, they had on the boat. Our ship was nicknamed by the ports that we go. They knew the ship as an African queen. That's what they nicknamed it, the African Queen, because I guess evidently, I don't know about other ships, but there was a lot of, lot of black people on our boat. We had to join together and keep them off our backs. Some guys got real hurt real bad. I remember there was a time that uh, we'd be working on the flight deck and they'd start singing. You know, sometimes I picture it like in the movies how they always show the black people always singing and about religious songs and gospel songs. And I got to liking to it. So I used to get close to hear when they used to sing. But there was a an ugly moment one time they were singing as a group. They were singing and working and singing and working. And a white officer came up to them and told them, you need to stop singing. And that to me was nothing but racial moves. That wasn't, what's wrong with a man singing on a boat? You know, no matter who it is. But he made sure they stopped singing. He was a white officer. So that's, that's another thing. So. Not only the military guys, sometimes the officers were also on that sort of racial thing. So I had to battle all that, besides the war itself. Being not like listening to the gospel songs I used to sing, they're, they're, I wish I could hear them today. <laughs> sucked me into them, you know, to want to, that's where I found my kind of like peace and rest when I would hear them sing, I would really get into it. And uh, so when I came out of the military, that stuck with me about, about church, I guess, religious, I guess, and there came a time that that I decided to want to look for a church to talk going to. And I did. We went to several churches. Uh, but there were always white churches, Caucasian people. And then one time, <clears throat> I met this friend of mine. His name was Billy Mackey. 
he played for the Los Angeles Rams back in those years. And he invited us to his church. So I, we went with him to his church and I liked it and we stood there. It was a church with nothing but black people, you know. And we stood there for a good while. My son even started to play the tambourines. My daughter started to jump down the aisle singing and clapping. And so we got to that point. I'm so glad. Then we moved out of, that was in Bakersfield, we moved out of there, and things changed. And we heard of another church. Fly, oh, your plane, fly. Bob, Army 72010, the center maintained 2000, I got you long, Claire. We used to be inseparable. You made sure you left me with lovely memories to mend my heart Did you always know the day would come? You'd be gone and I'd be left behind Sometimes, sometimes I wish that I could take a flight On a jet plane through the sky To see you again just one more time Close my eyes and take a jet plane through my mind to be with you again back in time. 